Hey, Sean here with IQ Barbecue, and today we're making the second most requested item on our social media pages, and that is Berea tacos. It's going to be absolutely incredible. These are the most flavorful tacos and the best meat you're ever going to taste. Stay tuned. Okay, so let's get right into this. And the first thing we're gonna start with today is our chilies. And we're gonna be using three different types. We're gonna be using ancho, pasilla, and guayalo chilies. And so basically, you, you know, you don't have to use all three of these. You could use two of them, or even one of them if you like one particular versus the other. They're not that hot. I'm gonna put three of each in this recipe. But again, make it yours. If you wanna put a couple of each or even more, it's totally up to you. But let's start by cutting them open and getting out those seeds. This process is actually very simple. So we'll take a couple of the ancho chilies here. And you should be able to get these at any of your local markets, uh, maybe a Mexican specialty store, or if you can't, you can always get them online. I'm gonna cut off the stems on both. And then we're just gonna cut them open. Opening them up, you're gonna find there's bunches of seeds and they'll fall right out since they're already dried. You don't have to get every single seed out. You know, if you get most of the seeds out, that's all you're really looking for here. One thing I would suggest is you put these in um, some type of a, a plate or a dish. I have a, just a plastic plate here. It's perfect because these seeds go everywhere. Oh, let me get the stem out of there as well, I should say. So stems, seeds. All right, choose some of our pasilla chilies now. If you don't want to use a knife here, you can use a pair of scissors. That also works. Again, just get all those seeds out that you can. You can see all the seeds just basically collect there and they just fall right out. And lastly, our guida chilies. These are awesome chilies too. These smell so good. If you could, if you were here, you could smell these from here. Even they're dried. I mean, they just have such a great aroma to them. The other thing about these dried chilies are they're just unbelievably inexpensive to buy. Just a, couple dollars for all those chilies so and they add so much flavor so now we have our chilies here i like a little extra chili flavor in this recipe so we'll add a little extra chili in here okay so now that we have our chilies what we need to do basically is rehydrate them they are dried dehydrated need to, we're going to need to go ahead and rehydrate these and how we're going to do that real simple we're going to put this in a pan i should say maybe a small pot saucepan here and we're going to put about two cups of hot uh, beef broth. If you don't make your own beef broth, you should. It's so easy to make. Uh, but a couple cups here, this is about two and a half cups. We're gonna add this to the chilies to re get that rehydrating process going. Just like that. And that smells great just by itself. Now, we're gonna let that hang out for about 15 minutes and let those chilies continue to rehydrate. We don't need to do anything else with them at this point. And so now, onto the meat. What we have here basically is a couple pounds of beef short ribs and then uh, a couple, about two and a half pound beef chuck roast. And fortunately, they didn't have um, one, enough of one or the other. Now again, Traditionally, you'd use goat meat for this, but again, that wasn't readily available today. So um, we're gonna use beef and you can use that uh, as a substitute, it works just fine. And you can use all short rib if you want. You want a little bit more of the, the fattiness of the short rib. Um, these are really, I mean, these are really hard to beat. Give you so much flavor. Or again, the beef chuck roast with some decent marbling on it is, working, is gonna work just fine for you. So, but what we need to do is first is we're gonna need to cut this beef chuck roast into pieces that are similar to the size of the uh, short ribs. These short ribs, by the way, are bone in. You can use bone in or boneless. If you do use a bone in, we are gonna make a small cut across each one. It'll get them to cook a little bit faster. So let's start by cutting our chuck roast. No real right or wrong way to do this. I just like to make some cuts into pieces that are very similar to the pieces that I have as far as my uh, short ribs. Remember, we're gonna cook this for a long time, so this meat's gonna get very, very tender, and so you don't have to worry about being unbelievably precise here, it's just not necessary. If you do have that natural seam in the meat, cut across that, that works just fine. Okay, so now we have our beef here and pretty much how we want it to be. So, next thing is salt. 
I'm going to generously salt all of these with kosher salt. And don't be shy with this. This is a lot of meat. A total of a, almost four pounds. So I'd make sure I coat all sides of this as well with salt. Especially those short ribs, which have that hard plate on the top and the bottom. So make sure you get the sides. Okay, so now that we have all our beef seasoned, what we're going to do is we're going to put it in our cast iron uh, Dutch oven, and we're going to go ahead and brown all the sides of it. That's going to, again, just seal in all those flavors that we want, and then we'll take our next step. So on to the Dutch oven. Okay, so now let's get our meat in our pot and get this seared up. So first thing we do is start with this. We have a seven-quart Dutch oven here, cast iron. We're going to add some avocado oil to it, but really um, any high-temperature oil will be fine. Three or four tablespoons is enough. Okay, once we get that in there, we'll start putting our meat in. And again, we're just gonna braise it on each side just to get us a nice color. Okay, now we're getting the color we're looking for. So now we'll go ahead and finish this up. We'll get our rest of our short ribs on there. And again, that's the color you're looking for right there. Just that nice deep brown color. Now put our short ribs in. Okay, so now the short ribs are done as well. So we will take those out. So now what we're left here at the bottom of this uh, pan is the fawn basically, and we, we wanna keep that. We don't wanna uh, get rid of that. So we're gonna go ahead and use this now and go to our next step. Okay, so now that we have our meat out, we're gonna go ahead and cool our Dutch oven down to low temperature. We're gonna add in a whole yellow onion. About two tablespoons of tomato paste, two tablespoons of oregano, and go ahead and stir this up. And again, you're gonna to wanna to scrape off the fond on the bottom here. It's gonna give you even more flavor. And we're just gonna let these onions kind of sweat and reduce down a little bit. And then, boy, I tell you what, that smells great just the way it is with all the flavor from those, from the uh, short ribs and the chuck roast. Gonna add a little bit more avocado oil to it as well. And you really want to get that fond scraped off the bottom here pretty good because that's going to give us so much more flavor. Remember, we're going to cook this entire meal in this Dutch oven. So the more you can do, the better here. So those are now sweating down a little bit. So now a little bit of salt and pepper. Now we'll add about eight cloves of garlic. Remember, don't get the temperature too high here because you don't want to burn those onions and you don't, obviously don't want to burn the garlic as well. So it smells so good. You're getting the aromatics off of everything. And that's really what you're looking for here is to get that, that basic scent coming out of it, the garlic, the onions, um, and all that leftover fond from the beef. Okay, now we're going to add about three teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. That'll give us that little bit of just uh, bitterness that we're looking for. Now we're gonna go ahead and add about a cup and a half of beef stock. So I always hold a little bit of beef stock back. Before I put it in the oven, I wanna make sure it looks right as far as the thickness. If I need to add a little more beef stock, I'll add it then. So hold maybe a cup or so of beef stock back. Boy, and this looks so good. Okay, so now that we have our beef nice and uh, braised on all the sides, we have our onions, um, our apple cider vinegar, our salt, pepper, garlic, all that's been combined. Now we're gonna go back and work on the chilies that we started with at the beginning. So we have the chilies that have been sitting in this liquid now for about 15, 20 minutes. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is add a few more things to this and then we're gonna go ahead and blend it up. So uh, to this, we're gonna go ahead and add a can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. It's a 14 and a half ounce can. We're gonna add some coriander, about two tablespoons. We're gonna add some brown sugar. And lastly, we're gonna add some chipotle chilies in adobo sauce. I'm gonna add probably just about two chilies is all I'm gonna add there. But I do want a little bit of that sauce. Now we're gonna just take a handheld mixer here and mix it up. And that should do it. When you're done, you should be left with just a nice, thin consistency here, just like that. I mean, but look how good that looks. I mean, that is about as good as you're gonna get 
as far as flavor. I mean, just, we'll taste some of that actually. Oh, wow, that's good. A little bit of heat on it, but not much. Just perfect. Okay, so now let's put it all together. So again, here's our onions and garlic and the broth that we made earlier. To that, we're gonna go ahead and add about half of the chili mixture we made. I'll kind of stir that up. Now let's start adding the beef back into this. And look at that beef, look how great that looks. Just perfect. And again, you don't have to do that. You don't have to uh, braise that beef ahead of time. You can put the beef in there raw, just it's gonna cook either way, but I like to braise it. I just think it gives it an extra little flavor that it doesn't have ordinarily if you just put them in there raw. I mean, it's still gonna be tender, but I'm looking for it to get an extra flavor. It's all our beef. Now let's go ahead and add the rest of our chili to that, sauce to that. And let's just slowly mix it here and just kind of get it all combined. And what you're looking for really is to make sure that all the beef is at least covered. So you have enough liquid to cover all the, uh, all the meat in here. Okay, now one last thing before we put this in the oven. I'm gonna take a piece of cheesecloth. We're gonna put about seven bay leaves in there, a cinnamon stick, and some black peppercorns. Fold this up. And we're gonna add this to that mixture. Again, just one more piece of flavor that we could add here. Layer after layer of flavor just gives you such a great product at the end. So we're gonna add uh, this piece of cheesecloth to the uh, Dutch oven. We're then gonna put it in the oven for about three hours at 350 degrees. Now, it may be done before that, it may take about two and a half hours, but so you wanna check it at about two and a half hours. And all you're really looking for is that beef to be tender. You can just basically pull it apart with the fork. At that point, it's done. Then we're gonna make our tacos. Okay, finally done. Just came out of the oven. And wait till you see the way this looks. It's incredible. Take the lid off here for you and look at that. How good does that look? Just amazing. Beef is completely uh, cooked in and look at me, just falls apart, which is exactly what we want. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take this meat out, put it in a bowl. Now you could actually shred the meat right in the uh, cast iron skillet, but I would rather take it out, shred it, outside of it and then use this for something else. So I'm gonna use this broth for more than just uh, this recipe, so. And you can see, and this meat is just gonna shred without any resistance at all, it just falls apart. We have some bones in here, obviously, in these short ribs. These are gonna just pull right out, though. So easy. Cook so well, these bones just pull right out, so. And now what we're gonna do is just do some light shredding. We're gonna shred the, the, the fat that's on there, the meat, in this bowl. Now, how far, or, or I should say, how coarse or fine you wanna shred this is totally up to you. Some people like it to be shredded, really shredded down. Some people would rather have it in lar little larger pieces. I tend to like it in a somewhat larger piece. So I may not shred this all the way down, but I'm gonna just kind of make some, you know, nice sized pieces that will fit inside the tacos perfectly. Just looks so good and it smells unbelievable. I mean, if you just look at the, look at the color on that, it's just perfect. And then that sauce is just amazing as well. So what we're gonna do now, Next step is on the flat top here, we are going to cook our tortillas. So and how we're gonna do that is, we're gonna take the fresh corn tortillas, we're gonna dip them inside of our sauce on both sides, get it nice and coated, put it on the flat top. Now let's talk about the cheese. If you're gonna do this right, you're gonna wanna use the Oaxaca cheese. This is just basically a, uh, a Mexican string cheese and it's just perfect for this recipe. Um, and it, again, you can use any cheese you want, but if you're gonna do it right, use the Oaxaca cheese. And you're gonna wanna just basically shred it up into just, just some long strands that you can put right on top of the taco when it's grilling. I'm go ahead and do three of these. And be careful, because this sauce is really, really hot. Okay, now take your, some of your Oaxaca cheese, Put it on the bottom of each one. This cheese is amazing, has such a great flavor. So I definitely like to get some cheese on here. Okay, now what we're gonna do is let that cheese start to just melt a little bit, get a little bit of uh, melt going, and then we'll go ahead and add our meat on. Okay, now that's perfect. Get the cheese melted. Now we'll get some of our meat. Get our meat and put it onto one side of the taco. Just like that. 
perfect. Now you're gonna take your taco here and you're gonna flip it over to one side. Perfect. That burnt cheese isn't gonna hurt us at all. And you wait to get a little bit of color on it and then you can go ahead and just flip it over to the other side. Like so. Wow, how good does that look? That, and it smells amazing. <laughs> okay guys, that is it. Let's go ahead and plate this and finish it up. And there we go. Look how good that looks. I mean, that is about as good as you're gonna find. It's just beefy, cheesy, crispy. So, but we're not quite done. I'm gonna get a small ramekin here. We're gonna have put some of this consomme in there. We're gonna go ahead and put some of this sauce in, in the ramekin. It gives us a perfect way to dip these, is how they should be served. Now granted, you don't have to dip them. They have plenty of uh, flavor and juiciness, but dipping them gives them that extra little oomph that you're looking for. I like to put a little bit of uh, sweet onion, a little bit of cilantro in there as well, and a little bit of cilantro over the tacos. Now guys, that is a dish that you could serve that anyone is going to love. Uh, this is a great recipe, so easy to make. It does take a little bit of time, but again, it's incredible. Let's taste this. Okay, time to taste this. I wish you could be here to join me because it just smells unbelievable. Um, it's, I could smell it when I was cooking it in the oven. Just filled the whole house with uh, just, just a, you know, just a rich, uh, and almost, you can almost taste or smell that chili peppers. Just unbelievable. So let's taste this thing and see, what it, uh, see how it came out. So I put some limes in here as well, but I'm gonna dip a little bit in our sauce. You're gonna see I've already taken a bite, so I kind of have an idea what this tastes like because it's that good. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Let me see, look in here, guys. I mean, it's just the cheesiness, the beef. It's everything. It's just so good. And that sauce, that sauce is incredible. I'm sorry, we're losing our light here. It's getting late in the day. This took a little while to cook. So if I can describe how this tastes, it's probably the best thing we've made all year. It's that good. The richness of that broth, cooking for all that time with all that beef. And remember, braising that beef ahead of time made all the difference in the world. This is incredible. Again, best thing we've made all year. Flavorful, you can put it just about on anything. So you don't have to just make the burrito tacos with it, but in these tacos with that wahiba cheese is perfect, just perfect. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did like our um, video, please subscribe to our channel and hit that post notification bell so you get notified whenever we put out a new video, which is every week. And remember, our merch is dropping soon, just a couple more weeks, everyone will get notified, so make sure you subscribe to that, and make sure you follow us on all our social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And remember, with IQ Barbecue, everyone can be a genius in the kitchen. I'm gonna get back these Bria tacos, because they're that good. Have a good day.